Hey, how are you doing? Rick Roslin here, Rick Roslin Science. And today, as you can see by my friend right here, this lesson is all about owls and owl pellets. But really, this lesson is about food chains and how energy is transformed into living organisms. And so the first thing I want to say is, I hope my friends are out there from Wayne Township, and I hope my Texas scientist, little Rowan, is also watching because there's owls in Texas and you can listen for them at night. Yes, I know, we have another bird over here. My friend the cockatiel, this guy over here, he, you better be quiet because this owl right here, uh, hey Ricky, this owl is a predator and you are prey. So you just go ahead and eat your seeds and your kale and uh, all your plants and, and, and seeds because some birds eat insects, some eat plants and eat seeds, but not this guy. This is a great horned owl. Uh, the kids at Chapelwood named him Albert Einstein. So this is my friend Albert. It's a great horned owl, and it is a raptor. I don't know if you can see right here. Maybe, Brenda, you can tilt down and, and use your fingers to spread out uh, and take a look and just spread out a little bit. See these, these claws right here, these raptor claws? This is a raptor. Hawks, owls, vultures, eagles are all in a family of birds called raptors because of these tremendous sharp talons that they swoop down and eat prey, usually a carnivore. So let's take a look at this guy right here. Let's take a look up here at his beak. What we're talking about here are animal adaptations. And so an animal adaptation or a plant adaptation is a body part or a behavior. Now think about that. It's either a body part, like my thumb, is a body part that helps me grab things. And my brain is a body part that helps me do complex tasks. And my third human adaptation that we all have is my language. So humans have three adaptations that make us pretty successful. Our opposable thumb, our big brains, and our ability to communicate with language. Now this guy has adaptations too. Look at this beak right here, an incredible beak for tearing meat. These talons, the more you pull on them, the tighter they get. These eyes can see at night. And not only that, these feathers, when it flies through the forest at night, it doesn't make a sound. It has like sound suppression so it can sneak up on something. So these are all adaptations that make this guy successful. Now you might ask me, why do I have this uh, uh, Albert Einstein? Oh, about 25 years ago, a friend of mine called and said, Rick, there was an owl that was hit by a car. Would you like it for your school? <clears throat> and I said, sure, but I didn't know what I could do. And what I found out is all raptors are protected by law because we don't want people killing these beautiful animals and taking their feathers or taking their claws. So I went to the Indiana Department of Natural Resources and got a permit to have this owl stuffed. And so what you see here, the number one question everybody asks me about Albert is, is it real? That's what everybody asks. And the answer is, well, yeah, it's real. It's not an app. It's not, it's not fake. What you really should say is, is it alive? And the question is, no, it's not alive. There was a man who was a taxidermist. The word taxidermist, taxi means to move. Dermis means skin. So a taxidermist is somebody who takes uh, uh, the skin off of a dead animal and puts it on a form of a plastic form inside. That's a taxidermist. So this guy, what's real about him is that those are his original feathers, original beak, bones and talons. Inside of him, he doesn't have his muscles or guts. He's got a foam, a styrofoam form, and these eyes are made out of glass. In fact, they look like they're real, but that soft part would not have survived. So this was an animal that was hit by a car, but, but I had showed it to thousands of kids across the, uh, Indiana. This is Albert Einstein, and we're going to use him to learn a little bit more about birds. So that's the story of Albert. And let's show you, I don't know if you can see this right here. Uh, can you see this thing? Okay, so this is a food web, and maybe you can draw this later. A food web, and there's two uh, birds in here. Here is a, uh, a barn owl, 
not to be confused with the barred owl, but we have barred owls and barn owls in Indiana, and the great horned owl. And what you see is these yellow lines is all the energy that goes into the sky. So if you see a line going up, that means he gets his food, a different layer of food. Now, I hope you remember from earlier talks that the sun sends energy to the earth and plants are producers of energy and all these insects and birds are consumers. And at the very top is the owl, who is the top predator or we like to call it, here's a fancy word, tertiary, tertiary consumer, the top consumer. So this is one way to study this, but our lesson today is not on adaptations, it's not on owls really, it's on the owl food web or food chain. Now if you study plants or animals, and I hope you go to school to do this, you can become a biologist. A biologist, if you listen to that word bio means life, biologist is a person who studies life. And there's all kinds of biologists. Well, biologists who study owls can learn a lot of what they eat by these things right here. Now check this out. This is this is kind of cool. This now, oh, it doesn't come in aluminum foil. I bought these from a company, and you and your mom and dad can order these online. Owlpellets.com. And you can get, I order them by the hundreds, but you can buy a nice kit with all this stuff that you see here, except for the owl, and do this at home at owlpellet.com. So before we go a little bit further, I wonder what's inside of here. Well, my second question when I show this to kids is that everybody thinks we're going to be looking at owl feces. Now, I don't say poop. That's a word I don't use. If you want to be scientific about it, the stuff that comes out of, uh, after you digest things is called feces. But this is not feces. It may look gross and disgusting, but it's not. It's actually amazing evidence of what this guy ate. So here's how it works. This owl, and you can see up close here, when an owl eats some of this prey right here, different animals, it grabs them with its talon, break, here's a little mouse here, it breaks its back, and it eats it whole, swallows it whole, doesn't chew. It goes inside, down inside of its esophagus. You, we all have an esophagus right here. When we swallow, that's our food tube. It goes from our mouth into our stomach. It goes into the esophagus, and they have a special little stomach. It's called like a granular stomach, glandular stomach. And what it does is that dead bird or mouse or animal or snake sits there, and the juices start coming into it, and dissolves all the good parts. And then it goes a little bit further down into something called a gizzard. Birds have gizzard. It's like a stomach with giant muscles on it. So since they don't chew their food, that little bird or mouse, after it's dissolved in the first part of the stomach, it goes to the gizzard. And the gizzard gets squeezed and squeezed and squeezed and squeezed, and the rest of the good nutrients go down into the digestive system. You know, some other birds Almost all birds have gizzards, and some birds, like pheasants, that eat a lot of corn and hard things, they'll swallow one or two small rocks. And in their gizzard, when they squeeze it, those rocks will grind up their food. In fact, dinosaurs even did that. Another connection between birds and dinosaurs, but that's a different talk. Uh, scientists and paleontologists have actually found gizzard stones in association with dinosaur bones. So maybe dinosaur, some dinosaurs did the same thing. That's the evidence. So once it goes through here, inside of that gizzard gets all the stuff that the bird cannot digest. There's no energy in it. And those things are feathers. There's no food in feathers. Bones. They don't need the bones. Teeth. Claws. Or fingernails. And all of those things, which you see down here, get spit back out, or here's the word for it, regurgitated. And then these land on the ground, but they don't last long on the ground. In fact, nature is the great recycler. And so when I've been in the woods probably, I've only, my whole time, of, my whole life in the woods, I probably only have found five or six of these on the ground. You have to look carefully, because when an owl spits out one or two of these a night, the other animals and bugs start eating them. The decomposers, the worms, the rain, the wind, and they don't last long. In fact, if there's a bone in the forest, the rest of the small mice go, wow, 
Hey, vitamins. Other animals eat bones like crazy if they find a bone in, in, out in the woods. So these don't last very long. In fact, uh, I've only found like five. So you say, well, Mr. Croswell, how did you how did you get these? Well, there's people out in Washington, farmers who love owls. Farmers love owls because owls eat mice. And we don't like mice at the farm because the mice get in and eat the corn. And so if you find one of these on the ground, a farmer picks it up, puts it in a bucket, and then they wait, and then once a week, he sells these to a company like AllPolis.com. They take them, they dry them, they put them in a special oven uh, about three or 400 degrees to kill the germs, and then they wrap them in this aluminum foil, and then I buy them, or you can buy them too. So that's the introduction to uh, Albert, and that's the introduction to the food chain and adaptations. But what we really want to do today is take a look and see what we've discovered. So check out check out his beak, and I'll come around and we'll get a closer look. Okay, okay. so I got my table ready down here. And I got some owl pellets. And the first thing that, that I want to show you is this is what you usually find. You usually find what's called a vole. And a vole is a fancy word for a mouse that lives outside or a meadow mouse, a meadow, like, you know, the meadow out in a field. And so this, the first thing about this is so cool if you ask me because this guy like a lot of vertebrate animals, that means they have a backbone. You are a vertebrate, you have a backbone. You have a scapula, you have a humerus. In fact, what you see here is really cool because you can find almost all these bones on your body, except for a tail, we don't have a tail. <laughs> but you can find your femur and your tibia and your fibula and your radius and your ulna. All of these bones are on humans and on a lot of animals, your cat, your dog. We are in the same group of vertebrate animals. In fact, these are mammals, they have fur. So this is the first thing I wanna show you. And so we're gonna look over here at our, uh, don't forget your notes. So today, what I wanna do is look at our, our, our owl adaptation, adaptations, there's the word, adaptations. And you can draw a picture later of maybe the beak maybe the claws, maybe the eyes, and the things that make that owl a good adaptation. And also, we're gonna talk about a food web. And so our food web is kinda of cool. So starting up here, I always like to put the sun right here. Here's the sun, the energy from the sun goes over here, makes all the grass and plants go. These are called producers. I hope you've made this drawing before. And then the energy goes up to consumers. And there might be more consumers. So we're gonna call this guy here. Here's our little mouse. If I draw a little mouse right here. Rowan, you're good at drawing mice. Uh, Rowan can draw me a nice mouse. There's my mouse. I don't know if you can see that guy. That's a small mouse. Maybe it looks like a cat. I don't know. Put some whiskers on it. A longer tail. And then up here is gonna be our friend, <laughs> the great horned owl. Ooh, ooh man. And and make sure you put his claws because that's what he's really good at, those ta uh, talons right there. And now he doesn't really have horns. He has special feathers up there. And those feathers make it look like he has horns. So here's my little drawing. So the energy goes up. Sun, plants, consumer, top consumer. And uh, so we can find out exactly what this guy eats. There's his beak. And I already know what this guy eats. <laughs> What's he doing over there? Oh, he's eating some seeds. And uh, let's see, let's, let's get started on this owl pellet and see what we can find. Now, so not only do you find, if you, if, not only do you find, uh, um, mice, you might even find a mole or a bird. And one of the first things to do is look at these skulls. If we find a mouse or a shrew or a mole or a bird, that's pretty cool. Now, if we find teeth, 
We know it's not a bird because birds don't have teeth, but here are some of the things uh, we can find in all these bones you have on your body. So let's start this really cool investigation. Let's open this guy up and see what we got now. Some of the tools I'm using, you don't have to have fancy tools. In fact, uh, um, I usually just use a paper clip and my paper clip here. And I, um, here's a couple more of these. My paper clip, I like to bend it to make a, open it up to make a little poker so I can get all the fur out. And I don't even know, maybe, I don't know. One time I found a snake in one. That was pretty cool. So there I made me a little poker. You can use a nail or a, a pin or some tweezers. All right, so the first thing you do is let's open this guy up. And, and you won't believe how small <laughs> these things are. Let me turn some light on here. Maybe I can add some light. This will be kind of better. Let's see here. Maybe. Turn a little bit of light on. There we go. And let's see here. Here, this guy's kind of kind of cool. All right, so we have our owl pellet. And um, I'm going to carefully start to take it apart to see what I have in here. Oh, I can tell you right away, when I broke it in half, I see some things sticking out right here. Wow, look at that. There's a bone right there. Oh, look at that. Oh, this is so cool. Here's my first little guy. This, I found a bone and a jaw. I hope you can see that. That's a jaw right there. And I know that's a jaw because I've taken these apart. It's a baby, that's a pretty small jaw. You can see one tooth, uh, that's a sharp tooth for cracking seeds. And back there in the back are little molars, little bitty teeth. Uh, let me try, I have a hand lens here. Let's see if this even works better. Can you see that? Check it out. Maybe I can use this lens even better. No, probably not. This, this is probably the better one. All right, so we're off to a start. Here's a little bone too. And that bone looks like it might be maybe a humerus. That's a small jaw. This might have been a really small, oh, let me open that up. Oh, here's another, look at this. These jaws split in half. And so there's the other half of it. That's pretty cool. So you got your right half and your left half of the jaw. And as I start to pull these apart, oh, look at this one right here. See that, that's right, kind of cool. Can you see that? Let's see if we can find that on our chart. In fact, I think I know exactly what that is. Check this out. I think that is the, yep. In a mouse, the fibula and the tibula are together. Now in your body, they're two separate bones. That's from your knee to your ankle. You can feel that right now from your knee to ankle. You have two bones, your fibula and your tibia. In a mouse, they're hooked together. Put that guy right there. And this is kind of a small one. Um, I'm gonna put this off to the side because that is kind of a small guy. I think I'm gonna open up another one and see uh, what we have inside of here because I wanna show you a big one. Here we go. And after you do this, there's a couple ways to do it. I used to like, I just like to take my tweezers and pull all the fur out. And some people like to uh, soak them in water. And you can even soak the bones later if you want in, uh, in peroxide, you know, peroxide that you have up in the uh, in your medicine cabinet. If you soaked all these bones in peroxide, they'll turn white. It's really kind of a cool thing to do. All right, so here's my owl pellet. Remember, I spit it up and I gotta carefully see if I can pull this apart without breaking anything. Oh, here we go. Oh, there we go. Oh, sticking right out. You never know what you're gonna find. A lot of fur. There's part of a scapula. There's a part of the your shoulder, you have one of those. Here is a big bone right here. Oh, that's probably your biggest bone in your body, the femur. Check that out, there's a femur. You don't believe me, we can check it out, see if we can find it on our chart. I think, there, there we go, look, femur right there. Let me show you a little bit closer, see if we can. And what's cool about this, you can turn it around and you can, you can actually see the little bit of, uh, 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 the little knob on the end where the joint fits in on your femur, your upper thigh. What I really hope to do is find the jawbone of this guy right here. So, oh, there's a rib 
and oh, look at how, how small the ribs are. And there's gonna be a bunch of them, probably about 25 ribs. So you have to be very careful, very careful. Now, some people wear gloves. I don't. I think wearing gloves is, is not a good idea for this because these have been uh, about that. Um, I thought I had my do not disturb on, but I didn't. <laughs> so. All right, here we go. And, um, oh, check it out. Here comes the skull. Oh, look at that. That is, that is so cool. There's a skull. And if you're really careful, you'll be able to get all that fur off of there. Check out that skull. There's going to be a top skull and two bottom jaws or mandibles. And I'm going to carefully pull that off. And look, look at that. Look. Oh, look. See the yellow? The yellow shows me that that is a rodent because a rodent, look at this, how beautiful that is. A rodent tooth. Check it out. The rodent tooth. The video's off. Are you kidding me?